Welcome to Fiery Discourse, your podcast and media featuring dragonesses, female dinosaurs, and other similar stories and skillies. I'm your host, Lud Milanon, and with me are my co-hosts, Anne Grand, Mad Machine, The Shark, Jordan, Striker, and our special guests today are Python and Charvoon. What's up, ladies? Today is our 81st episode, and we're discussing the 2023 My Little Pony Make Your Mark episode, <laughs> oh, the Island God. Scaly. So, let's get things started. Now, as... It's not off to a good start. Hope yeah. you're complaining, there's going to be a lot of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hopefully not too Strap soon, in, at folks. least not as much as last week. Let's do it that way. I yeah, hope but, I hope you guys some, I hope you guys get entertained by a bunch of twenty something year olds complaining yep. about stuff. It's and like be one thirty year old. Yeah, it's all right. It's all right. But like I say, we'll get to it right now. Wait, two thirty so, year yeah. olds. Sorry. It's okay. But uh, of course, uh, My Little Pony, Friends of This Magic G Four, left uh, Hasbro in a bit of a weird situation when it yeah. ended because it was so universally acclaimed and beloved by many, but it had some pretty big shoes to fill and. G5 I know how they did not... that. Yeah. They just took a big old horse dump in them. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, like it's like they, that bad, that far. Yeah. Uh, they, they but... did. They basically looked at the fandom and says, "You want more MLP? Here's more MLP." And then they just slapped them in the face and flipped them the bird. Two birds. Yeah. Yep. yeah well, I feel and like that's the biggest... nice version. Is this what the whole episode is going to be? Probably it's not, not. It's but, not. It's not going to be like that. We're, what we're it not going like. to make it like that. Okay, let's not. Let's not go there. Okay, guys. Yeah, but, uh, let's not. Like I said, yeah, one thing do, I will uh, say, uh, for, just to start off, I feel like the biggest flaw of the show is making it connected to G four because it kind of sours the G four ending in ways that we will get to later on in the episode. Oh, absolutely. I feel like on top the of yeah. best option would have been just to make it a standalone generation like all the ones before it, in which case it wouldn't agree. have had that baggage on it. That would have been I will, it. Say, yeah, I will, I will say this s- about uh, Gen 4, however. No, not Gen 4, Gen 5. In spi- the, the biggest issue I have with it is not really the fact that it spat in Gen, Gen 4, which, yeah, it's not great, but what it does to tie in G4 and the lore and everything with that, for the most part, this is going to be a hot take. But I feel it works. It has some connection. It's connected, and I and uh, for the most part, I can rationalize it pretty damn comfortably. What I find wrong with G- G5 is the fact that it feels like compared to most other generations, this absolutely revels in the fact that it absolutely uses every form of dated humor imaginable. Oh yeah, and honestly, even this be- show is this show is so <laughs> unbelievable. Heck, how does this Ludmilla Ludmilla on? You'll well, I'll talk about this. I'm going to talk more about this, but Ludmilla on, how does the episode begin? What? Uh, Ludmilla on, uh, can you hear me? Um, Hello, hold on. Right, can. right. But <laughs> to start with the episode itself, like I said, uh, we will, like I say, uh, basically, uh, the overall view of G5 is that it's set in the distant future, like centuries and centuries later after, and the ponies we basically have to rediscover. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we have technology. Yeah. Honestly, only it was here's... 2,000 years later, then everything's going to be chrome, but, yeah. well, the bus is chrome, so at least there's that. But basically, Here's, the setting of G five is that the Jarvan. ponies are trying to be friends again uh, after after what happened was they kind of lost it throughout the centuries. Which it's not a bad hook for a show. I have to admit, it's not yep. a bad hook that that would happen. Like like say seven eight hundred years after Twilight Sparkle and all of her adventures, it, it would make sense that would happen. But it's something about the execution that does not work. But again, we'll talk about that much later on in the episode. Yep. Unlike G4, uh, G5, at least this part of G5, is done in CGI. And yep. like I said, the animation isn't terrible. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's, I've seen a lot worse. And, uh, yeah, it's not it, bad, but it's not appealing to look at. Are, um, the designs themselves are pretty decent at times. But now let's actually start talking about the episode itself. Because the episode begins with the new main six, which consists of Sunny, Hitch, Izzy, Zip, Pip, Misty, and Sparky, the baby dragon, who, yep. unlike Spike, he's an actual baby that's a dragon, not like, you know, how Spike was, but... He anyway, did just hatch, episode... so... Yep. The episode begins with them flying in the Mare Stream, which is their flying uh, bus as they travel off to the Dragonlands. 
Pip is busy listening to music on her smartphone and annoying Zip, which... That hurt okay. me. That hurts. Yeah, that I just, will say this. That immediately smacked me in the face when I that started watching. I will say this. Yeah. Okay, that didn't hurt as much I'm as not gonna it... Be as, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to be as negative about this episode as you guys, and I will say this. Ponies with smartphones just feel so weird to me. It really feels like it's how do you do fellow yeah. kids with the talk know, of making like playlists and that, you know? It exactly. really is something that it, it I does can not imagine, fit the world building at all. At I can all. I, I can imagine the re one of the reasons why is it was their attempt to uh it was their attempt to uh symbolize that this is in the future of G4. Like G4 was in the past and G5 is in the pre in the future. Here's but here's my biggest here's my big comparison to G4 against G5. G4 mostly felt timeless. You can argue yeah. that the little easter eggs or background characters do date it a little, but for the most part, this sure, it does have things that do t that do look medieval like castle armor, castle designs, yeah. and even crowns, but it also had disco, it also had disco, Doc Brown level science, and Minnesotans talking in a funny accent, don't you know? It Long was story short, place, pretty much right, Charvun yeah. is saying that yeah, uh, we get this it. is we a show that takes place in yeah. every time period and no Basically, time period. Basically, yeah, we it understand what you're saying. That it had a, it had a fairy it tale. to one particular time period does not work. It really makes the show dated in ways that you know, shows like this shouldn't be. It's like, yeah. it's kind of like with the the second generation of My Little Pony. They had stuff like they made fun of MTV and they had ponies doing aerobics. And again, that's stuff that, you know, 30, 40 years later, you look at it and you're like, okay, yeah, this is definitely a late 80s show. And yeah. gonna, that's going to happen with this one too. People are going to look at it and they're going to say. Also doesn't help that, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't help that all the other uh, generations in some way, shape or form are absolutely dated. But what makes... Gen 5 stand out above the rest in that it regard. Really it is in its datedness. And it's not exactly. funny. It's actually second and a set and a side and a side problem about it being dated, it's not funny about it. This opening mm. joke was just so yeah. painfully bad. Like yeah. it yeah, made we, we it get it. Pip as yeah, thank you. probably the most annoying thing in history. Yeah, she at okay. Yeah, I will admit she's not as bad about it, and there are some good moments involving her. But if even the movie didn't really give her a good chance of uh, starting a first impression with everyone, especially her mom. Yeah, uh, like I say, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get to that in a moment. But but what yeah. happens is a uh, basically Hitch back getting back to the episode itself. Yep. Uh, hopefully, won't be too many tangents like that for the rest of this episode. But we'll hopefully see. not. Hitch basically claims that the last time they went to the Isle of Scaly, there were no dragons there. Misty is more reserved than the others, saying she hopes to get there before Opaline, who is the main villain of G5. Now, one thing I did uh, like about this show, I give it a lot of credit for, Misty was basically the hench person, the hench pony of Opaline, but she broke away from her to do her own thing and find friends, which I like that. I like that concept a lot for a show like My Little Pony to actually redeem like the villain's lackey like that. Is something that is really, really fascinating, and it's something that I'm actually surprised G4 never tried. Believe it. I or mean, not. to be fair, stuff like Ruby and okay, honestly, G4 had way too many re redeemable villains. Let's be, let's yeah. be honest. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Even I have to. Do, even I have this, to. Admit though, that. With an evil pony being redeemed, I I do like that. I do like how they did that, and I will say that um that this is one of the aspects of it I really enjoyed was what they did with her, at least in terms of her characterization. So basically what happens is the animation on the bus as it flies through the uh, jeweled caves looks pretty good. But suddenly the map they use to uh, transport their way uh, basically through uh, Equestria goes out, which causes Izzy to have to hold Sparky and use his dragon fire to relight the map. The group continues to fly through the caves as it gets narrower and narrower before the theme song starts. Now the theme song, it's not terrible. It, it really is not the worst theme song I've ever heard. Uh, it is, a, like I say, it doesn't have a lot to do with My Little Pony aside from the jingle at the beginning, but it really isn't that bad. It really is, like, it, it's modern day, yeah. you know, kids show theme music. You know, a lot of people saying, oh, it can't compare to, you know, G4. I mean, they're right, but still, yeah. it's not the yeah. worst. You know, they could yeah, it's definitely not the worst. I it's will admit very... that the visuals absolutely make it not worth listening to, but the song itself is nothing The song is, itself is uh, pretty good. The song good. Nothing Honestly, the song's pretty. I feel like the song is kind of forgettable. Yeah. 
in a way. Not in bad, a way. but it's not really memorable. In a way, in a way, yeah. But what happens is after the theme song, we see the uh, we basically cut to the uh, mainstream flying out of the cave and arriving at the Isle of Scaly. All the ponies look out of the window and wonder, with Misty knowing that the last time they had to arrive through a magic door. And Pip, meanwhile, uh, wants to take some snapshots with her smartphone, but it turns out the battery is nearly dead. And Way to go, she... princess. Yep. Do the eye roll. Yep. And she plugs it into an outlet, which has like 50 other plugs in it, which just reminded me of that uh, Fairly Odd Parents episode with Vicky. And this is the VCR, <laughs> and this is the DVD, and this is the popcorn <laughs> maker. And I don't know what this one does, but I don't pay for the electricity in this house. That's what <laughs> And yeah, classic, classic. Classic. because he has a fear of robot overlords. Honestly, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Honest, on, yeah, honestly, another a problem I have with the animations coming up when the in a, in a little bit you when you I'll I'll explain it when you after you talk about the next. Yeah, part, save right? the, yeah. save your ammunition for when yeah, it really it counts, buddy. Yeah, yeah, like yep. I said. So what happens is basically uh, apparently the. Uh, Basically, plugging in the smartphone is too much electricity, causing the bus to stop and fall out of the air. The group uh, all scream in fear, Izzy. except for Izzy, who has an idea. And it turns out that Izzy probably is my favorite pony out of the new main six, mostly because she's basically Pinkie Pie. And I think they, they did a good job with making her like the new version of Pinkie and her blowing up some balloons and basically throwing them under yeah. the bus to stop it from crashing on the ground. That's cute. That that is that's a that's a nice little, totally have done. That's something yeah, that would have cute. done. I, I feel I'm surprised that. I'm surprised they never done that, but this sort of leads me to one to some to um, my biggest sorry, sorry, problem uh, with the anime. Yeah, hold up, hold up, hold up. Shark, what are you saying? Sorry. Yeah, that, that 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 was something that the actual Pinkie Pie will do in a similar situation. Yeah. Also, exactly. I will say that I will say this. Calling Izzy straight up Pinkie Pie especially in this scenario, is a little inaccurate. There are certainly signs, and the show absolutely builds on that for the most part. But uh, Izzy, for the most part, is a lot more reserved and uh, clever than that. She's smart. She's a genius, as evidenced by the movie and some points of the show where she actually makes stuff and actually uses her brain. But uh, yeah, yeah, calling her straight up Pinkie Pie 2.0 would be a little bit inaccurate. Yeah, yeah, I, I just got that. that vibe from her from this episode, basically. But, uh, yeah, uh, unfortunately, I haven't seen like the movie or anything else in a very long time, so uh, <clears throat> you would know more than I do on that front. But Honestly, yeah, to me, this uh, but this leads me to what something I have I feel is wrong with the animation. Like at times, it tries to have the same zaniness as the first film, but it feels like it's just doing it half heartedly. When they fall, yeah. I don't really feel the adrenaline or really. It doesn't really look like it's falling that fast compared to something like, say, Madagascar 2 when the airplane falls. Like, good news, people, we're landing soon. Bad news, Hi, news. We're crash, landing. crash landing. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's not. It's not. It doesn't really feel. You don't really feel the momentum or the speed of it. I feel like this is something that MLP would have, or for Generation Four would have done so much better. I'm not saying it's the it's the fault of the animators. I'm just saying it's the fault of the directors who didn't say who didn't really care how much that this didn't really have that much of the same feeling. It just felt yeah. half hearted. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, that that's kind of a problem with the show. The movie thankfully did not have this issue, but the uh show definitely made up for that twofold, I feel. Yeah. In terms of same, animation. Same. But like I say, uh, to me, there's, it does not look terrible. I mean, listen, say, there's a lot of other kids shows that look way worse than this. And I feel like for what Hasbro had with the budget, they did the best they could. But what happens is the ponies all walk out of the bus as Sonny is just amazed they made it there. Hitch mentions that the dragons were asleep for ages, causing Izzy to remark that they should wake them up, which causes Pip to sing We're Here in a pop star-like tone. And apparently... Mm. Pip is not only a princess, but she's also a pop star, which, okay. Oh, that's God, you just reminded else. me of that one VeggieTales uh, movie, The Princess and the Pop Star. Oh, oh God. God. That I'm wasn't sorry, bad, but, but sure. okay, it wasn't that bad, but the I hear princess and pop star, and I think of that. It's weird, but it's whatever. But now Yay. we get to see the... Yep. 
now we get to see the reason why we're in this episode because a voice asks them why they are here as we see it as blaze which is a dragoness who is flanked by several other dragons and before and we continue, continue, and two others are also dragonesses I, yep that's I, right tumble and uh lux i believe are also dragonesses yep. but okay before we move on i have i i just want to get this grievance out of the way this show goes this episode goes way too fast like there's basically no this they there's basically no real proper introduction with these dragons. They just sort of say, Where are the dragons? The show's like, there they are, and they and they just sort of continue. Like, even generation four, like imagine remember Gauntlet of Fire, the buildup of the Dragon Lord and Ember and how Matt and how at least it took the time to breathe to get to know the characters. Like, that's missing in, in this that's something that you'll find is yeah, missing. but uh, we'll, we'll get to more of that yeah. in a little bit. Yeah. But for now, yeah. but right, uh, right now, here yeah, with these dragons, um, I feel like that this is where the show kind of lost me a little bit because these dragon designs are really not that creative. They no. look yeah, more like scaled with ponies with like yep. uh, with dragon tails and dragon paws and horns rather and than actual oh. unique designs. Compared yeah. to like G four, where all the dragons had unique designs, you had like Spike. Yes. You had Ember, you had like Garble and those characters. Mm-hmm. They they took care to give each dragon their own sort of unique quirk or their own unique look that really made Here? them stand out from the ponies. Yeah, right. 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 I'm gonna have I'm a sorry, tangent sorry. here. Sorry. Uh, uh, may I? May I? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Please go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Striker. Go ahead. Striker. Not only are they not as unique as um as G4's dragons. They literally look like they're all just the same model. Exactly. More or less, they yeah. Are. Also, yeah, they I will like say this: same... the only excuse I can possibly see uh, in that they all look like this is a the magical sleep that uh, tr- tr- that they were put under. Yeah. And exactly. pos- and possibly letting natural selection uh, like let them adapt and ultimately work without magic for a long ass while. All exactly. the female dragons have the same hairstyle. Yeah, like, they exactly. Have like, the uh, same. They have like sort of. Yeah, uh, I noticed, and mo- many of these dragons had ears. Like, and did Spike all the have male ears? dragons are bald. By the way, we just wanted to point that out. That's how you tell the dragons yep. between the uh, the male dragons and the, the female dragons. Yeah, uh, the yep. male dragons are all bald, and the female dragons all have like a uh, comb over type of hairstyle. But yeah, it's the like, like, I feel like, these yeah. dragons are these are some of the most boring designs I've ever seen for an MLP project. Indeed. It's like hmm. to me generation after learning. generation 4 which had unique designs for both ponies, creatures, dragons, every single thing they at least had time and effort. This just feels like half this just feels half-hearted again. It feels like a cookie cutter sort of thing. Also, it, it kind of but yeah, yeah kind of reminds me. Like even oh, Gen Three probably had like better dragon and creature designs compared to Gen Five. Well, we will that... talk about G Three in the future. So when we get to that, oh, we will get to that. Oh of boy, that'll be, <laughs> we'll be, be for, for another a very time. Long time. That's not going to be for a very, very long time. But we're going to need a lot like... of alcohol for that. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But getting back yeah, to G Five. Something I want to say uh, before ahead, sorry, we continue is that uh, yep. what was mentioned of the dragons being introduced, introduced with no introduction. I think it's because this show assumes everyone who watches it is familiar with Gen 4 and by extension this universe already. That and they That's probably are f- reason. That, that and they're uh, probably assuming they're familiar with Tell Your Tale, a spin-off of uh Gen of Make Your Mark. Which... Yeah, that's the thing, but that's again, the problem, that's a though. bad that's not a good excuse. Because that's a not lot a good of kids excuse. Might not have seen Gen 4 or make your or tell your tale or the movie. You know, when you do like a spin-off or something like that, you have to make sure that people going into it are not completely confused. And I don't think they did a bad job with it, but they could have done a little bit better. One thing Honestly, I will say I do like about the designs is the size difference between the ponies and the dragons. That yeah. is a really nice touch that the dragons are several feet taller than the ponies. That is also, they have really another cool. unique thing, which we'll get to later. But we'll get yeah. to that. But for now, uh, basically, Blaze tells them that they are all trespassing and then asks who they are. Sonny introduces all of them, and we get some. We get a couple of cute character moments with Izzy being the only one that's really happy to see them. 
And in a moment that actually got a pretty good chuckle out of me, Misty does like a fluttershy type of squeak. That they actually got a good laugh out of me. Was, that was like, okay, you did a good call back there. Yeah. But they immediately but, lose me when they when they have Pip ask where's the service. Oh gosh. Uh, yeah, Pip might as well be uh might as well be a worse version of something like Olaf or freaking I, uh, I, I detected rarity. Portia. I detected rarity. rarity. She definitely was the yeah. rarity of the group. Or, or but, Portia Crystal, which even then Portia Crystal had her redeeming moments, even more so than Pip. Yeah, exactly. Portia Especially is, even Rarity, thinking yeah, about it. But, uh, yep. Even yeah, Rarity but, uh, would look Blaze. at Pip and say, "What a drama queen!" And that's coming from moi. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she definitely, she definitely was said. Anyway, getting back to the episode at hand. Basically, Blaze brushes her brushes off Sunny, but Sunny tries telling her that an evil alicorn is going to take their magic, which causes Blaze to rethink things. In a really cute sequence, Izzy runs up to the other dragons and dragonesses, bouncing up and down as she excitedly talks about how she made charm bracelets and wants to be their friends. And I will say this, I like the idea of the dragons being more open to friendship than they were in G4. That's uh -huh. really great world building right there, how they did that. Because again, I feel like with uh with G with the uh, G four, the dragons are always resilient to uh, learning about friendship from the ponies. But I feel like doing this in general, this really uh really enhanced it. And I feel like um, again, it makes sense story wise because seeing who the dragon lord is, foreshadowing for a little while, we uh -huh. that makes a lot of sense why they would be more open to friendship than say like Ember or the others were. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I feel like I'm, I. I feel also. Let's be honest. Izzy's the most tolerable character. Mm -hmm. She actually is. I won't yeah, lie. Yeah, I will say. Uh, like I say, Izzy is probably my favorite of the uh, main six too. But Same. anyway, uh, getting one of the dragonesses, uh, Lux, excitedly takes Come it on. while the others yeah. are more skeptical. Uh, another dragoness, <laughs> Fountain, flies over to Pip, who is fiddling with her smartphone, and. The first time I saw Fountain, the literally the first words out of my mouth were, "Oh, that's Dragonus Trixie. She has the exact same color scheme as the great and powerful Trixie, which is yeah, very do. interesting." Yep. Mm -hmm. Wonder if that was yep. intentional or if it was just like we're using the color scheme, but it's still pretty good. Yep. It tells her that she's trying to get a Wi-Fi signal with her smartphone, but the dragons uh. don't know what Wi-Fi or phones are. Pip has a little mini freak out over mm. this, making a variety of silly faces that, oh. again, it, it got a cute chuckle out of me. The faces got a cute chuckle out of me. I mean, you, you could have had this with Rarity and the dragon saying, we don't know what clothes are. She would have the same reaction. So, <laughs> in a way, it wasn't too bad for me. Except she would make it funny. I didn't think it was funny. I don't funny. know, it was I funny. Was I thought it was funny. Yeah, like you, the, you the, the funny here, too, honestly. Yeah, the faces were funny. You know, I, it, was, it was the reaction, you know, and the timing. That's what worked out. Mm -hmm. There's something. I, also, I feel I feel, Python Snoop do, Boop is um, but going, but coming back and forth. Uh, is something wrong? It's probably having internet issues. Sorry. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. But anyway, getting back to this, uh, what happens is Zip uh, has a sort of mini tape recorder thing, and she records the dragons who claim that they woke up when the evil one came, causing the ponies to realize that Opaline was there. The dragons mm -hmm. say that she captured two dragonesses. Lava and Jade while they are in hibernation. Sadly, they did not have SpongeBob and Sandy to help them out with hibernation. So that would have made things a lot better. You know, they could have played find the find the hay in the needle stack. I mean, come on, that would have been so much fun to see them do that. But just just out, just don't just don't call yourselves uh, Dirty Dan or Pinhead Larry. Sandy won't like that. But yep, uh, the, it turns out that the dragons cannot perform the magic that they do because of. Basically, their their shimmer being gone, and then we cut to Opaline's evil castle, which looks a lot like a uh, Canterlot castle. I wonder if that was intentional. That it kind of looks like it with the uh, framing. Who that. is the dragon leader? It might be. It mm. very well might be. But uh, we see her basically trot before Jade and Lava. The two of them attempt to breathe fire at Opaline, but she uses a spell to deflect it. Opaline then actually performs something that we. We did not get a lot of in G4, an outright villain song. The song uh -huh. is kind of generic, and it's definitely yeah. clear that the, the voice actress is auto-tuned for part of it. And the, the, the title is literally, I'm a villain. And 
Yeah, it's it's not one of the better songs. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I will say no, this though. It's no Flim Flam's brother. It's, it's no better way to be bad, and it's yeah, certainly no, as no, hell no but, uh, this day Aria. Yeah, it yeah, also no. doesn't help that uh, she. Li- it also doesn't help that during this she uses the uh, Dragon Stone, which we'll learn about later, to hypnotize them and use their fire to absorb magic and get back what she lost. But we'll get onto that later. Yep. We like, apparently well, but... she doesn't go the Reselda with that thing. On, on, uh, honestly, you know, the honestly the whole hypnotizing become a dragoness. If we saw her become a dragoness, that would have probably redeemed this whole thing. Yo, know, probably. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. This... ten out of ten. Honestly, if this, uh, honestly, if the, honestly, I feel like they have, could have used the hypnosis aspect to get away with some trippy ass visuals. Cause honestly, I always saw hypnosis as being a, uh, as being a, as being a catalyst to, it's like being on drugs, man. Like, uh. on, like really t- like, look at some, look at some stills of Mowgli being hypnotized from Ka from the jungle book and tell me he doesn't look like he's high. Oh, absolutely. And that was in the 60s, mind you, where everyone was high. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, no, no, I definitely can see that. But what happens is, while she sings, she hypnotizes them with the stone. After she finishes, she uses their dragon fire to breathe on the stone, which creates a series of, I guess, runes on the wall, which leads into her evil plan. We then cut back to the dragons, who are still not trusting the ponies, but then Sparky waddles out of the bus, much of the shock of the dragons, and Sparky is cute, but Zim from Dragon Prince is cuter. Let's be real. Oh, oh he yeah. Wins he the, is. No he wins the Dragon and Baby Speaking contest. of Dragon Prince, uh, Ma- uh, Maggie, am I dumb or does Opaline sound or does Opaline? We like will absolutely. Motivation? We will absolutely get to that in a moment. But for now, oh, yeah, back yeah getting back to Zim this. is cute. Blade There's no beating Zim. He that, is best boy. Yeah. Yes, he is. He definitely, definitely is. But Blaze basically claims that them having a baby dragon makes them dragon nappers. Izzy explains that Sparky was found by Hitch, who is technically his father. But huh? Blaze is enraged by this, while the other dragons basically coo over how cute Sparky is. And I do like how Blaze seems to be the holdout of like the dragons from Friendship is Magic, with the amount of cynic, the amount of cynicalism that she has compared to the others. I do like that, you know that she basically is like Ember or Garble or them, and that yeah. she's not very trusting of others. That is a very clever uh, touch there. Yep. Honestly, Tumble, I... Yeah. Tumble, who is not a Tumble from Mario Party, unfortunately, although that would have <laughs> been awesome. He mentions that they have not seen a baby dragon in a very long time. Or in Blaze... a volcano stage. Yep. Blaze, however, still does not trust them, as Sunny tries telling them that they're there to... Stop Equestria from falling into darkness and lose the light of friendship forever. Uh, th- this is a good line, but then it's kind of undercut by Pip saying a remark like, that would be bad, like, super bad, which, again, really feels like they're trying to pander to the audience of, like, the, the generation that's watching it, which it's like it's unnecessary. Like the, it's, it's like, it's like the story you and characters it, you know? Were... You don't have to, to pander so hard, basically. Exactly. But he... It honestly feels like the... It honestly feels like the story and characters are just keys that the producers are just wiggling in front of the yes, kids. Yes, the jiggling, jingling of the keys. Yeah, exactly. Look at the pretty keys! Look at the pretty keys! Oh no, it's bad! Okay, oh no, yeah, it's but, um, bad! Yeah, but, uh, Shark, you were saying? I was making a scene some joke, like, the, the flow good is also, of course, that's bad. <laughs> oh yeah, I think we'll oh, just yeah. steal some. That's, that's good! Funny. Oh wait, that's, that's bad. bad. No, okay. classic, classic. <laughs> But Sunny tries to get the dragons to help as Izzy pushes a charm in Blaze's face. Blaze mentions that they need the approval of the Dragon Lord before meeting with Ponykind. Blaze mentions that they will go to see him, but Izzy, Pip, and Misty want to stay behind with the bus. Uh, mm. Izzy and Misty want to fix the mainstream, while Pip mentions that she'll find some residential Pegasus Weefy to call for help, which, okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, basically... Mm. There is a pretty good gag here where Blaze tries whispering to Leaf and Lux to stay with the ponies and watch them, but Lux instantly gives away why they're staying as Blaze just face palms in the background. That that actually okay, is the you funniest guys do moment that. of the episode. <laughs> that, that, that is the funniest moment of the episode because Lux just outright says, Oh, Blaze told us to stay here and watch you so you don't do anything sneaky, and then Blaze just face palms in the background. That that is a moment yeah. that actually got a good laugh out of me. You know, <laughs> and the juxtaposition is funny because like the ponies are just like, 
oh, that's cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, they exactly. know what's going on. They're just like, all right, that's cool. Just don't do anything freaking crazy, and I think we'll be good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hitch yeah. Uh, makes a pun about dragon, drag on, haha. But that oh, one God. Soren he is not. Uh, Soren he is not. They're trying to make him Soren not. in this, but fuck that. Yeah, that is yeah, not working not. for Hitch. Wait, wait, the background he is plays not. a rim shot during this, which is like, okay, why did you do that? You know, it, you know, it feels like a sound effect that was not really warranted, and it's mixed so softly, you can't hear it, which is a very huh. strange thing. But the dragons all mention that the magic keeps fading from the Isle of Scaly while Sunny tries to uh, befriend Blaze. The dragons all think that Sunny is the leader of ponies due to her being an alicorn, then tells her to say that to the dragon lord. We then cut back to the bus as the magic uh, lantern that powers it keeps getting dimmer and dimmer. Pip notes that all of her electronic devices aren't charging as we see them all plugged in again, which, again, you the think level would of technology... Be, uh... Yeah, you think it would be her fault that the whole thing is uh, that uh, her over excessive uh, technology reliance is causing the ship to lose power in the first place? But, but it nope, isn't. it goes nowhere. Yeah. yeah, like I say, what it is is basically Izzy unplugs the, all the devices, but then the lantern actually gets dimmer. And Izzy reacts to this by saying, what is this, opposite day? And it's not opposite day, because if it was opposite day, they would all be showing Squidward's house to a realtor. Yeah. And then the episode would end with oh Squidward goodness. chasing him on the tractor. Also, Happy also opposite was, day! If, okay. yeah, sorry, also, if this was opposite day, then this would actually be better than G4. Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah no, definitely. But yep. I do like, also, we then get another funny moment. Again, I feel like the dragons and dragonesses, they had a lot of fun writing for, because they do get a lot of really good lines. We get their exchange of, oh, we weren't trying to eat. Sorry, we weren't trying to eavesdrop. We were actively doing it. That's a good line. Yeah, that's a pretty yeah. good line, I'll admit. Yeah, uh... It's okay. Uh, I'll, it's okay. But uh, get, getting back to this, basically Misty realizes that the problem is with the lantern, not with the mainstream. We cut back to the other ponies as Hitch is surprised to hear about dragons having all different types of magic. Tumble can make a ball of fire and blow it around. Lux can illuminate things, and Fountain can control water. The group all goes to a massive temple where the dragon lord is hibernating. Blaze is. Uh, yeah. But she blows uh, on a quick tangent on point. the uh, fire. Okay on the fire having mystical properties, that's actually pretty unique. Like, stuff like Fire Force uh, delves on the on the versatility of fire, like fire transforming to sound, transforming to ice, fire being having different colors, fire basically being the precursor to lightning and uh, freaking uh, plasma, fire basically uh, being used for heat and for atomic energy, that sort of thing. But uh, here, that that's also pretty cool. It's also pretty cool here because it gives more uh, freaking uh, versatility and uniqueness to the dragons of this world. Of this, it also world. ties in. It also ties in. It's actually also something that subtly ties into Generation Four, where remember, Spike's Spike has the ability to send messages from Celeste from Twilight to Celestia, and vice versa. We don't know. I don't know. I don't know whether or not he was taught that, or if he can just do that, and they decide to take advantage of that. But either way, it's. I'll. I'll. I'll give this reboot a cookie. That's actually pretty neat. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. But getting back to it, basically, what happens is Blaze has to blow on a gigantic horn as to see a large purple and green scaled tail near the entrance. Hey. The Dragon Lord awakens as it's revealed that it is Spike from G4 of My Little Played Pony. Played by Matryo from Yin Yang Yo. Yep, his uh. voice actor is Martin And honestly, Roche, in my honest it. opinion, the return of Spike was underwhelming. Like, first of all, yeah, because it was yeah, it's a voice that doesn't quite fit. It. I feel like it, what it is, is, I don't know, it just doesn't really work for me. It's... Honestly, if they're not could... serious enough, it's either not serious enough or not jovial enough. It's just you know who could have knocked this out of the park. The mark. You know who could have knocked this out of the park? Keith David. If you watch his performance as King Andreas, oh, definitely, definitely, yeah. If you watch his performance as King Andreas, you know he he's a he's very good at switching between serious and goofy in a heartbeat. Yeah. Though and, this I one mean, would be playing a good guy. But I mean, then again, he probably was too expensive. I think he but... would do a good job. Isn't it? I really think so. Yeah. But... Also, to be fair, here, about... however, uh, cut, sorry to cut you off, Sharon, but 
Go ahead, to be yeah. fair, for the actor doing uh, Spike here, he does have his, he does uh, transition serious and uh, jovial fair enough. But I will admit, yeah, it definitely could have been handled a little better. And to about, be fair, say- him as Master Yo doing the same thing. It mostly works there as well as here, but yeah, him uh, doing that sort of transition, he definitely needed a little bit more work on that. Also, exactly. Uh, a, personal, a, personal right piece, a, a personal piece for me, Spike does not look cool enough. He's like, he, he really looks like he's the same age as all the other dragons. He's only slightly taller if you look closely at him, but honestly, if, if when I hear by Dragon Lord Spike, I imagine his appearance. I imagine his appearance from uh, Secret of My Excess, except much less, except much more reserved. Like I imagine him I, being a giant, like a that, gentle giant. Sorry. That so, one. Oh, uh, go on, go on ahead, Python. Also, uh, okay, things are starting to come back to me now after getting absolutely wasted the other night. <laughs> to forget this, but like. Okay. <laughs> okay, so Spike, he's bipedal in Gen Four, but in yep, this, I was just about to mention that he's quadrupedal. Here he is a uh, four. He is quadrupedal, which okay, it's not a bad idea. It is something that it just looks I feel weird with the passage of time. I mean, you gotta figure Dragon Lord Torch was also uh, quadrupedal. I mean, maybe that happens to dragons over the course of centuries. Of course, mm. the new dragons are all uh, quadrupedal, so it doesn't make sense, but. Getting back to it, though, uh, what happens is uh, Sonny and the other ponies all bow to Spike as Sonny asks them if they could just call him Spike. His reaction of, it'd be weird if you'd call me Fred, and then he lets out a weird laugh. It just feels awkward. It really kind of does. I mean, to be fair, Spike didn't exactly uh, freaking... I mean, Spike in the original had his awkward moments. Like, yeah, he, he was, was, I mean, good, he was right? a yeah. jokester. He was a, sar- kind of he was a sarcastic yeah, joke. Yeah, when you put it like that, it does kind of work that they're paying homage to the original Spike. I'll, I'll give him credit where credit is due. Yep. But, Honest, basically, but honestly, uh, it still doesn't feel entirely like Spike, because I feel like Spike would have come up with something a little wittier. Like, it'd be, it'd be fun. Like, maybe, yeah, maybe a funnier quip would have been, it'd be weird if you just... If, It'd be weird if I just called you a pony. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, what happens is basically uh, Sonny calls Spike a living legend as Spike remarks that he does not know uh, what year it is from all the magical hibernation. What year is it? (laughs) Yeah, exactly. How old are you? (laughs) Okay, yeah. But this leads to a joke from Hitch about uh, oversleeping that kind of falls flat a little bit. We do get a really adorable moment where Spike reacts to Sparky uh, in a really adorable way, and I like that. Mm-hmm. The ponies explain about uh, the evil Alicorn as Spike is shocked to hear about Opaline. They explain that Opaline had been trying to take over Equestria for centuries, but the spell wore off and she's back. Zip mentions Twilight Sparkle, and I do give him credit. Spike uh, basically being taken aback at uh, hearing Twilight's name and basically getting teary-eyed. That's a good touch. I like that. If they a honestly would have worked. Honestly, that would have to me it would it is a nice and powerful moment. Though if they had though if they made Spike look a little older then I feel like it probably would have been a little more impactful cuz I don't know, it's that's just sort of me. Mm. Probably, yeah. But I will say this. Uh, what we get later is absolutely going to... Uh, is absolutely going to... Uh, that, I don't know. I, I'm I'm just, like, hearing all this, and I'm just drawing a little bit of a blank. It's okay. Uh, it's my okay. bad. But, all right, getting back to this. Basically, uh, what happens is uh, Spike tells the ponies to follow him into his cave as Blaze oh, is gosh. shocked that he's having <laughs> ponies into the cavern, mentioning that they know nothing about ponies. In a nice touch, Spike mentions that he knows more about them than she ever will, which embarrasses her. Burned. Then, then, but burned. yeah, th- that line felt out of place. Fountain says, oh, Blaze got burned, which again, it feels out of place, not just for the setting, but also the mood they were going for. I do Ugh. like what they did with the interior of the cave with, you know, gem-studded walls. It looks really nice. Uh, uh-huh. What happens next is Spike mentions that he remembers about all the adventures with his pony friends, before remarking about how the magical hibernation makes it hard to think about. 
Sunny mentions about how excited she is to meet Spike, who she remembers from like her grandfather's stories and her father. I do your father, yep. sorry. I do like the look of sadness on Spike's face at this moment. And again, I feel like if we got just a little bit more characterization from him, that would have been really, really good. Honestly, that's they... my biggest problem with the with the dragons. I don't feel like they have that much characterizations, but I'll talk more about that later. Yeah, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. But Basically, what happens is Spike mentions how Twilight protected all of them and all of magic. Tumble says that the dragons all hibernating on the Isle of Scaly was part of Twilight Sparkle's plan. Sunny brings up the Unity Crystals, which Spike is amazed to hear about, and they are the Crystal Bearers. Basically, the Unity Crystals are this generation's version of the Elements of Harmony, so it mm -hmm. pretty much works like that. Uh -huh. Zip pulls out uh, his, her recorder as she asks who Opaline truly is. Spike mentions that Opaline is the reason why he and the other dragons had to flee across here in the first place. Sunny asks if it's because she wanted the crystal, but Spike said it's because she wanted magic. And it's here we get the uh, backstory of Opaline, which is interesting. It turns out she was from a land of alicorns, and she arrived in Equestria to take over. Twilight's friendship was so great that Opaline was forced to use dark magic and use the dragons to become a fire unicorn. Of course, we saw Twilight become a fire unicorn in season one, and they didn't make a big deal about that. Yeah. I think with that, because she just got, like, her... Everyone gets rage at some time. I think her rage just kind of unlocked yeah. that little spark of, no, like, no, no. It, it was uh, interrogating. But anyway. but Honestly, uh, with I, 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 I don't know if it's appropriate to bring up, but uh, Maggie, uh, am, I, am I crazy, or does Opaline's backstory sound familiar? No. Yeah, for those for all you those out there who are do not uh, understand the context, basically we have a power we have a power mad individual cast down from a divine realm filled with other divine creatures like her, and in her and basically what she and basically what they try to do is ha turn mortals against each other, use dark magic and deceit to pretty much cause eternal calamity against superpowers that govern said planet, but said. <laughs> But said uh, superpowers ultimately turn against her and seal away the bit and seal away the person to make sure that nothing like that ever happens again. Except oh, chaos ensues, and that pretty much ultimately was a double-edged sword. Wanna know what I'm exactly. going with this? This is basically just Erevos from Dragon Prince, except suckier. This is basically just Dragon Prince, except suckier. That is yeah, yeah, the vibe that I'm getting from this. I can definitely see where you're coming from with it, and that too is a Netflix <laughs> show. So, were they copying? A, was Hasbro copying a Netflix homework? We all have. I seen. do not. I would not doubt that they were at this point because, like, yeah. we got Hitch basically pulling a Soren, and this backstory is pretty much, for the most part, similar and on par with freaking Erevos. Like, and don't forget no, copying. No and, don't, and don't forget copying MLP because it's also similar to Cozy Glow, except she's yeah. except nowhere near as unique honestly it just yeah. feels it's just this whole show honestly watching this whole fr this whole episode i think it's just unremarkable and just un yeah I, it's paint by numbers for the most part it like it does have some unique moments but it doesn't really feel all that unique or genuine not to the point of something like Wish, Lord forbid, but it definitely feels like it needed a bit more fleshing out, or at least something, to not make it feel like it was trying to be a brony killer. And as well, as Hasbro, and actually that leads to something that's interesting, that leaked oh. emails from Hasbro actually said that they did not want to appeal to the brony audience with uh, Gen 5. Mm. They, they actually Which said makes this. this even worse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, yeah. But I, I think it's true, but I think with only her story like is saying, "Hey, we don't want money." Well, true. Fuck you guys. <laughs> also, I, I looked this up. Yeah, it's highly possible that they did copy of uh, Dragon copy Prince. Dragon Prince because oh yeah, my Dragon god, Prince. you filthy plagiarist! Uh, Honestly, yeah. Prince premiered you know in 2018. You know what? Huh. There's well, uh, you know what, guys? True. If you you, you what, didn't want to, you didn't want to attract a brony audience, but just kept the setting and just made it into the future. How does that make sense? Please, exactly. producers, if you're if you're watching this, how does this make sense? Reach out to me. Reach out. To, I mean, how does it make sense to 
not try to appeal to the previous audience generation's audience, but you right. keep the previous generation's setting and try constantly to say, we're just the future version of the previous generation. We're going to keep referencing it. It's the same universe. Yeah. Uh, honestly, the more yeah. I think about this, the more it hurts. Ugh, you feeling me, got, you feeling me, Striker? I do. But, I, do. Yeah. I mean, there no, no, is no, some things that are right. different. Like, Opaline was... To, he, you see in her song or in whoever's backstory, we see that Opaline is trying to hang out with Celestia and Luna when they were young, back in that time of age, you know, where all everything was all powerful and peaceful when Celestia and Luna were still young. She tried to fit in, but it didn't work. So she figured, oh, how about I just do a different dark way by showing off I could be a different Alicorn, but be a fire Alicorn by using her own weird dark magic she had. So yeah, she stole Dragonfire and thought, oh, I can just, you know, rule over Equestria back as it was back in those old days, just how Luna was. She wanted that old time way back in the day. She had her celestial voice and thought people would be intimidated by that. Same with Opaline. Same way. It's the same concept. Yes, I get it's all different and, you know, yeah, the fifth generation didn't work so well, but it's it has some unique quirkiness to it to some way, then it gets on further, which we'll probably get to that point in the recording of the Probably, yeah. definitely yeah. Well, we'll definitely uh, when we talk about that in a little bit, we'll get to it. But mm -hmm. basically what happens is Twilight was forced to put all magic, pony and dragon alike into the stone that Opaline has. And Twilight put a protective spell around all of Equestria, but it was damaged after the ponies brought magic back. And we get to see a Twilight scream of terror in this painting and it is really tragic. I mean, like I say, this is for me what the biggest flaw of G5 is, is that it retroactively really makes G4 seem kind of pointless. And again, it's a shame. It really is a shame because if they made it its own standalone thing, nine-tenths of these problems with this show would not really have happened. Probably, yes. However, it's all, <laughs> like I said, all of this is connected, and for the most part, it works. The lore, mm -hmm. the logic, all of it—it mm -hmm. it absolutely makes sense. And oh no, it works. It works. Yeah, I just it feel fits the face of it. Absolutely, I'll, I'll yeah. agree with you on that. But the but learning about it and actually thinking about it, I can kind of see how this how everything ultimately kind of went the shit, and everyone is yeah. the way they basically are. Basically, just it basically yeah. Oh, I, but I still can't call me a call me an obsessed fan who doesn't like change, but. Or who doesn't like new things? Uh, but to quote the nostalgia critic, I'm sorry to I'm sorry for all nostalgia critic haters, but I don't hate new things. I hate lazy things. To me, and honestly, yeah, they don't. Yeah. Yeah. To, to they... think, to me, this basic, like everyone says, it takes the goodwill that the first that that generation four built up and just wipes it clean, like. I feel like this was designed to piss bronies off first and foremost. Like if this yeah, was it's, its own thing, it would have had a stronger chance, but yeah. by, but by doing the way it did, it pleases it. It 100% it pleases, pleases no, one. no one. Yeah. I feel that. And again, all of it works and the downfall absolutely makes sense with the context given but yeah, you're bas you're you're basically uh not establ you're basically not building upon that and not making it stand out in any way for the fact that you don't want any more bronies and the fact you just want to do your own thing because charts or whatever. And you also exactly. and you also exactly. happen to that, and you also so happen to take said. Twilight Sparkle, one of the best protagonists of of what I call the cartoon renaissance, and you made you her a her dumb off. clod. You made her a dumb no, clod. No, okay, she's okay. Not that's little, not a little. That's not that's accurate. That's a little much. That's that's not, yeah. She's not. That, she's not. not she good. wasn't dumb in doing what she that's, did. She had to make a sacrifice yeah. to keep everyone safe. However, but yeah, it came at the cost of pretty much ripping off Dragon Prince, having everyone go against each other. Except with that, Dragon Prince had that had a lot more buildup and a lot more logic put into that. Here, however. It's just because time passed, no magic, no nothing, and everyone was just like, fuck yourself, no fuck yourself, and pretty much everyone went their separate ways, and it was not great going forward. You just reduced, quite... and you just reduced some of the most likable and great characters of the cartoon renaissance, and you just made them, well, 
background okay. noise. That's yeah, that's a better word. We just made him background we, we get, noise. We get it. But getting back to the episode at hand, what happens is, uh, like I say, what happens is uh, we do get another good moment with Spike's reaction. You lost magic. Oh, I'm just going to go to bed, which, it, I mean, honest, that, that was a good one. That, that yeah. actually got a pretty good chuckle out of me. Yeah, yeah. I'll bet. Uh, <laughs> that is how Spike would react, let's be real. But all of the dragons basically want to give up, but Sonny gives them a pep talk. Blaze tries telling her that it's over and it's hopeless, but Sonny dissuades her of that. And she becomes more and more like an alicorn as she spreads friendship, which, again, a good concept. I like that. I like that. Her alicornness is tied directly to her, you know, spreading more and more friendship. That is a really good moment. Yep. But it turns out this is the next part of the design with the dragons that is very interesting. All of them have, like, cutie marks, which is very interesting. And uh, not in a good way. It's something that it feels like they tried to difference themselves from, like, the previous generations. But outright giving them, like, cutie marks feels a little weird basically a little weird yes but i will yeah. admit it it's not like completely oh hey one to one mlp thing it's like yeah, uh no. it, they make it their own came about it. because it came about because they're hibernation sleep and natural selection all that i will admit that anyways anyway yeah yep <laughs> but anyway uh basically uh all Blaze is still cynical about it, while Spike mentions how he will always remember his pony friends and is always there to help. We then get to see Sparky breathe fire as he turns a stone into a pile of candy, and the other dragons are in awe over his transformative magic. Spike mentions how Sparky is special, and then he mentions how much Sunny reminds him of Twilight, which, on one hand, is pandering, but on the other hand, it is kind of a nice moment. It is kind of like a, a nice passing the torch sort of uh, thing. And if this uh, if this uh, series would have gone on for longer, then that probably would have made a little more sense. But we'll get to that in a couple minutes. Basically, Spike mentions that he's in to help them as Blaze decides to join him, her cutie mark lighting up as well. The dragons and ponies begin to walk away as Hit sees Sparky playing with two dragons. He considers that the dragon lance might be Sparky's home, but Spike tells him that he grew up with ponies as well and was fine. And that Hitch would be a good father to uh, Twilight, to uh, Honestly, uh, Sparky, to Sparky, kind of like how Twilight was a good mother to him. And again, these are moments that I feel yeah. work. Like it actually does feel kind of like it's earned. It does it feel feels like, like it's, it's a full circle. It really does feel like that. And I if, feel if, like if the, the episode wording. had more moments like this, I probably would have thought of it a little bit better. But anyway, uh, honestly, I feel like it would have been. I feel like the wording could have been stronger. Like he could have, like Spike could have said. Honestly, pitch. Honestly, the little one does. The little one will be happiest where the little one belongs where he's happiest. I know I did. I know mm. I did. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, we then cut back to. Uh, we then cut back to the other three ponies as the dragons are basically trying to rock the bus back and forward with it being completely broken. The. the Why? The others arrive as Sunny tells them that the ponies and dragons are now friends. Zip basically makes a joke about burning the bus, which Izzy takes literally and actually asks if they could burn the bus for real, which really just doesn't work for me. It's one of those things I was like, I had to roll my eyes and kind of just like skip through it a little bit because, yeah, it wasn't really that funny. Sunny thinks that they're stranded in the Isle of Scaly now that the bus is broken, but Spike has a way of helping them out. We then cut back to Opaline in the castle, who is busy gloating that, with her stealing cutie marks, the magic of friendship would wither and she would rule once again. The episode ends with the ponies riding on the backs of the dragons, as Blaze says that they're a team, and in a sweet touch, she has the charm bracelet that Izzy tried to give her earlier. Pip's smartphone finally turns on in a kind of lame payoff to that joke, and the episode ends with the dragons and the ponies uh, all flying off into the sunset together. And Having an end of the show laugh. <laughs> yep, yep. Well, they yep. did that a lot. They did that in the original generation too. Let's be fair. They did that in Gen Four. It's very much a staple. But you have on the SpongeBob oh. way where yeah. everybody they cross the crowd allows and then they get. Then they just and... stop and walk away. Yeah, that, that, yep. that's how they should have done this with this. They stop. They laugh and then they just stop and just <laughs> suddenly fly away. But uh, that's it for this episode as a whole. Now, what's interesting is this is the 
third to last episode of Make Your Mark. There would be only two more episodes, and then it would end shortly after, apparently on a cliffhanger, because it was not getting as much good ratings as the other My Little Pony uh, series, which is called My Little Pony Tell Your Tale. And that's basically the pony life to this uh, version of Friendship is Magic. So it's yep. interesting to see if they're going to continue the story with Tell Your Tale, or if they're just going to like drop it and just do <sighs> random nonsense. We will have to see. Yep, we Honestly, should like oh, after our watch. question of the week. Yep, Honestly. which uh, leads to where will My Little Pony go in the future? Now, this is one that has a lot of an- answers because, number one, Hasbro themselves are not doing very good. I mean, for all we know, they can go bankrupt tomorrow and My Little Pony just falls into the ether, never to be seen again. I mean, I if it wasn't think for... that's going to happen. I, I mean, if it wasn't for... Tra- yeah, if it wasn't for Transformers, they would have gone under a long time ago. Let's yeah, be fair. Yeah, yeah. And, and ponies, let's be fair. Ponies probably yep, also... Yep. Uh, Gen, some Gen 4. I feel... Yep, Gen 4 especially. And Equestria Girls too. As much as I didn't like it, that was a major moneymaker. But I feel like what they are going to do with Generation 6, because let's be fair, there is eventually going to be a Generation 6. I feel like what they're going to do is going to be like what Transformers does. They're going to see G4 and just hit the reboot button. That the characters are going to be Twilight, Sparkle, Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, Applejack, Fluttershy, and Rarity. Now, they might be different versions of them. There might be a version where, say, Applejack is a Pegasus and, you know, Fluttershy is a unicorn. Maybe they will do something like that. Yes. They'll do, like, maybe different variations of them. Maybe Fluttersh- maybe uh, Rarity is on the side of the bad guys. Who knows? But I feel like what's going to happen, we are going to see the G4 characters basically become the faces of My Little Pony. Because when you look at it even today, I feel like everyone knows who Rainbow Dash is. You, you show a person a picture of Rainbow Dash and they probably will know who it is. Can they say the same for like Zip or Izzy or any of the new ponies? Do they have maybe that kind of Izzy, instant recognizability? You yeah, know, maybe so Izzy sure. and Sunny, but maybe, the, yeah. But not as much. I don't think they penetrated n- not even half as G4, which is why I feel what Hasbro is going to do, they are going to just hit the reboot button and they're going to use the G4 cast like Again, again, kind of like with Transformers. The Transformers always use like a G1 characters like Optimus, Megatron, all those guys. It's going to be exactly like that. I really feel that is going to be their plan going forward with My Little Pony. Of course, I may be completely wrong. Maybe they'll do like brand new ponies in a brand new setting and have it not be connected Mm. or have it be a connection of this. You know, it's really impossible to say. But what I think what Hasbro is most likely to do is the reboot of G4 that they see that these characters are the most iconic ponies that they have, and they're going to help. They're going to hold on to them. They're going to take these characters and they're going to hold on to them for as long yeah. as they can. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them, but that's what I think they're going to do with it. And Carl, what would your answer thing. be? Mm-hmm. So what would you say? And Gron? <sighs> I mean, on the one hand, I agree. I definitely could uh, want to see like, uh, G4 uh, was something unique. However, in that regard, I kind of it kind of brings me to an idea or sort of something that I saw on DeviantArt a while back, like having uh, the main sticks, but if they were like different creatures, not just ponies and whatnot. Like we could have uh, like Rarity a uh, unicorn. Uh, let's see here. I suppose Fluttershy, a, uh, dragon as a very hilarious juxtaposition. Uh, Rainbow oh, Dash, a Pegasi. Oh, gosh, yeah, I kind of did. Uh, Pinky as a, or Applejack as a Minotaur. Uh, freaking, uh, Pinky as a, let me think here. I guess as your, uh, basic Earth Pony. Excuse me. And Twilight as an alicorn. Like, there is so much, uh, there's so much ideas. easily, easily. Yeah, however, I think the realistic uh, outlook is having the main six basically be uh, rebooting the main six completely for the most part. And, uh, and or, uh, I remember, uh, I remember uh, uh, Evie mentioning this. Uh, He said, that the series, they could do an entirely new MLP series altogether. Like something with Transformers, as it were. 
So, uh, yeah, like that uh, Transformers com- comparison absolutely holds here because it's uh, because it could very well happen and we could very well get a new series with possibly the same characters, but with possible different renditions of them. Yeah, but, I definitely yeah. have to agree with you there. All that seems really plausible, you know? I definitely think, like... Uh... Like you said, having it with other creatures as well could be a really unique concept. And there's another version of that where, like, all the main six are uh, different creatures in a way, which, again, would be fascinating. And especially if there was a way they could do that while also keeping the themes of the uh, franchise. That would be really, really neat. So, um, Math, what would you say, uh, where, Tundra, sorry, where would you think uh, My Little Pony is going in the future, uh, like concepts and such? So there's one of two possibilities that I see happening. These are basically the only two things that I see happening. Uh, if anyone at Hasbro has half a brain cell, what they will do is they will see the reaction to G5 and realize, okay, no, we can't do this. We can't do a continuation of G4. That's actually been a really bad reception. We have to be creative and do something original again and bring it back to 2D where people really actually enjoyed the animation style and go with that. The problem is this is saying Hasbro has to be smart. And this is the company who, when they saw that uh, Wizards of the Coast was the only one that made them money that year, they fired a quarter of their staff. So I have no faith in that. What I'm assuming is going to happen is uh, they are going to double down hard on the G4 thing. What they're going to do is a full on reboot. They're basically going to do just pound for pound the same thing as G4, and they're they're just the only difference is it's going to be full CG like G5, so that they can model the characters exactly one to one on the toys that they're going to be making. Yeah, yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, yeah those like, are the like only you... two things that I personally see happening, and unfortunately, I see the latter happening more than the former. I'll bet. Unfortunately, yep. I feel like uh, basically uh, what you said is true that Hazard is one of those companies that it seems like they succeed despite themselves instead of because of what they do, you know? Yep. Ouch. Well, it, yeah, might, might be going a little too far there, but uh, oh, no, it's yeah, accurate. I definitely see where you're coming from. So, um, Striker, what would you say uh, is your opinion on where My Little Pony is going to in the future? It's hard to say, honestly. But I think I agree with math on this. Because okay. it just... Because it, it just... You see where they're at now, so they'll probably try to take it in that direction, maybe. I don't know. Yep. Probably. That de- yep, that definitely... Uh, yeah, I can kind of see that. So, um, Shark, what would you say, uh, if you have anything to add about uh, where you think My Little Pony would be going in the future, or any concepts or that? Kind of see the, the stuff that has been mentioned previously with returning to Gen 4, like, after Gen 5 ends, I do see Hasbro going like, oh, well, uh, Gen 4 was successful, Let, let's go back to that, and I see it rather than that, well, it could be a reboot, but mostly like a continuation of Gen 4, like, oh, this is what happened between uh, Twilight's Coronation and the very, very last episode, so... Maybe adapt the comics into animations and, well, whenever they do it 2D on 3D, that will be, I don't, I'm not sure, probably like a mad say 3D for the toys. So, but yeah, Twilight and Friends are going to be the protagonist of the next um, version of My Little Pony. Yeah, mm. I definitely can see that, you know, it definitely is something that, uh, that again, it, that's a good concept with uh, it being like a between story. I feel like that has a lot of potential because we could see Luster Dawn and her friends in that. And again, mm. that could really work out in a way that uh, that would be a lot more interesting. And you could tell a lot of different stories with that and probably build up to things with G5 too in a little bit of way. Absolutely. So more um, Ember, for example. So Yeah, she wasn't in this episode, which, okay, maybe that happened if uh, because it was so... Uh, it was so distant in the future, but not even a mention of her. It's very, very strange. Makes yeah, I wouldn't mind a continuation. 
I don't see that happening. I see the full start from scratch reboot. Yes. Yeah, um, so... Also, Striker, since they didn't mention Amber, do you think the writers or even the producers bothered to even watch the previous episodes to get an idea? I don't think they uh, did. I don't I think they have don't even. No, I would not know. Uh, I don't uh, think they, they researched. They only knew about the characters. That's it. They didn't really care about yeah. the continuity. Yeah, but could be. yeah that is shitty. That yep. is shitty. Yep, it definitely that is uh, definitely bonafide shitty walk. Yep, but anyway, uh, so let's see here. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, Pipe. Uh, sorry, uh, Jordan. What would you think uh, My Little Pony would be doing in the future? Any sort of concepts or any sort of uh, ideas you have to add with the others? Or I think I think they just need to lay, lay off the comic books. All their ideas are going straight to the comic books. For example, when we have uh, the main five looking through uh, Cavern, we find Izzy a doorway to the original Ponyville, and we find that, oh, lo and behold, we find Discord alive, but he's flipping crazy because, oh, he didn't have Fluttershy around, which is true. We don't know where the rest of the main five may have gone, but he's like, oh, I can't live anything without Fluttershy, and he goes crazy and you know, like, oh, you all represent how Fluttershy used to be. Uh, Hitch has that kind of ability to like, talk to animals and be kind to them. But they need to start making the comic books and maybe put some ideas from the comics to the Generation 5. I mean, I've seen the Generation 5 series and the movies, and I look fully agreed to admit there's just not a whole lot of clicking to some of the stuff like it's too goofy you're not making sense with like okay concept of friendship it's what twilight and the rest were kind of like oh magic is friendship which it does but they're pushing too much of the goofiness way on to the friendship like um what happened to caring to a lot of people we see pip who is the youngest princess in uh with her sister who's both in the technology, they're what the next generation is going to be. They're going to be uh, iPhone kids in our real life. I'm like, no, we don't need to put a little bit of, put more friendship stuff. Forget the technology stuff, which is kind of cool in way for for Zip, but none of that stuff doesn't seem important. Like, uh, what about caring for your friends? I said through all that through Sunny. She is like basically what it's supposed to meant to be for a generation of any kind. Um, I wish they would just stop making more of the comic books and just focusing on the all ideas into the cartoon series. No more of this weird uh, CGI of how they look. None of that needs to be what it is. I like the old ways of Generation 4 kind of made it look like in season uh, 5 or 6. They made it look a lot more clean and colorful. I like that. And from what I can tell from the cartoon series of Tell Their Tale on YouTube or whatever they're showing this, they do hit some marks on how uh, a lot of stuff could have happened or they're going to happen. Like this whole city of alicorns that um, Sunny finds or how Opaline talks about it. I'm like, okay, that's kind of interesting about this whole city of alicorns, which it doesn't make sense because... Back in the old days of Equestria, there didn't used to be a whole city of Alcor. They didn't talk about Celestia, Cadence, or Luna generation back in those days. They didn't talk about that. So now we have a city of Alicorns in the sky. Okay, what's I'm, going on here? I'm going to defend that a little bit by saying if everyone knew about the city of Alcorns, then it wouldn't exactly be secret. Or for that matter, something that people were like, huh, maybe. I, I like, mean, it's something that it's meant as sort of like a brain tickler back in those days, but it being yeah. confirmed by uh, uh, the fact that Twilight and Spike had to face a denizen from there that, that wasn't to let or Luna. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, exactly. I get. I'm glad that you you defend him, and I'm I'm just saying this that like, to my point. I mean, like, we've never known a whole lot about Luna and Celestia of their whole lifetime because they had it in their the book of the twin, the two sisters, which is about Celestia and Luna. We know a little bit about them. We don't know a whole lot about Caden's uh, whole generation of her life because she keeps it all to herself. Now we get Opaline, who just comes out of nowhere, and she's like, oh, I want to go have a back with the day when Alicorns rule the world. I'm like, okay, 
I like where it's got the idea she's got some backstory to herself, but then she tells it in late, 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 late episodes and movies. I'm like, you could have told this somewhere in the middle plot line. Not at the end of the whole point where everything's about to go down bad for her. And with Spike, he does indeed tell about his dragon friends, which used to be with Lord Ember. She did was friends with the ponies and with Spike. So he does talk about Ember just a bit. Not a whole lot, which I get to a point like, uh, wait, you could have said her name was, you know, Lord Ember back at the time. Spike, I get it, but... That's just my point that maybe they can throw in more backstory for these characters in the cartoon series of Tell Their Tale for My Little Pony Generation 5. Yeah, I, can I see wish that. they can yeah, get more same, stuff same. to it. Don't add a whole lot of the real life. Again, we don't need no more tech babies with the, with the My Little Pony. I mean, I get it, but you can still keep, like, get the balance between everything else. Don't throw in a whole lot of tech and stuff. Add more stuff that we want. Stop giving the artists like, oh, let's do a comic book. No. You throw all the good stuff in the animation stuff. Don't throw it into the cart in the Yeah, in I the definitely mat. see where you're coming from. Yeah, I want more animation. Stop giving it to like, oh, let's just put it in the comic book. No, you're gonna make us read this. I've ever watched for free. Mm. Right, right. That's that's yeah. what I'm hoping for, that if they bring a balance to everything else and bring back a lot of good old stuff from Generations uh, five, I mean four. Yeah, yeah, we really do need like absolutely. Uh, yeah, I can definitely uh, see that working out better. You know. Yeah, we absolutely yeah. need attention to detail. Yeah, like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, Python, what would you say would be uh, your ideas with uh, My Little Pony in the future? Okay, so the are the co are the comics considered canon? I choose That's to believe a weird that. Place. I don't okay, know. so okay. Bottom line: Hasbro needs to return My Little Pony, to return to form, and needs to go back to the old way, or well, the Gen Four and back way. Yeah, back to when they okay, were so they weren't afraid to like acknowledge the fandom and say, "Hey, guys, you like good." Shit, yeah, we do like good shit. Well, here you go. Yeah, so dump it down on a barrel full. So anyway, so anyway, uh, when it came to Gen Four, it start. It had night. It had sort of family friendly elements and had a dark elements. That's what made the show so diverse and good. Yep, had a mix of Disney. Exactly. It then had like. Genuinely, actually, scary moments. So I think, I think they should go do a little mini series of like a like what if, like kind of what Marvel did with what if or Star Wars did with Visions. Just do that a little interesting little series of like each episode being its own thing. I can definitely get behind that. Visions was amazing. Love Death and Robots was amazing. That was that 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 would be fun. Like, yep, yeah, exactly. It's happening concerning the state that Hasbro is in now. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, sadly. But uh, okay, um, Charvoon, what would be your idea for uh, My Little Pony: uh, The Next Generation, or any ideas of what to do with it? This is a loaded question to me because I'm of the firm believer that Generation 4 is over. It's it's not over to me like I still love it, but the show's basically over. It had a great run. It ended on a great note. It was a great show. Let's just start from scratch and try something else. And that I just I just had an epiphany right here. Like I just realized probably one of the biggest mistakes the producers did. They didn't wait long enough for to make a new generation. They only waited barely two years after this to release a new to release Generation Five. To me, I feel like that's part of the problem. That it was it was way too soon for many. It was probably too soon for many fans. We honestly, 
it's I think that one of the first steps they need to take is take some time off from My Little Pony. Like wait another three or five year, three to five years to let the hype die down. Let sort of the fans really recuperate, get them to uh, calm down. Really accept the idea that the adventures of Twilight and Pinky are over. But again, but going back to my original point, there's so many ways you could go. Honestly, the biggest thing that Hasbro needs to do is get some leaders, or get a crew and leaders who actually care about the stuff they're making. Because that's sort of the biggest problem with Generation 5, in my opinion, at least from what I've seen of this episode. I haven't seen much. In fact, this is probably the most I've seen. The, this episode, plus a couple songs here and there, my, I feel like the biggest problem is that this was made by this was a show made by people who were pretty much apathetic towards towards the towards the franchise in general. They generally just saw it as kid stuff, little girl stuff, stuff that you didn't really need to try hard on. Basically, why I sort of question it. I wouldn't it. say that because, like, the original generation and even G three had a lot of uh, good moments. In it. I will say that much. I meant about G five. Like they sort of assembled a crew, that group and crew, where they're kind of ap- apathetic towards the franchise. Say what you will about the other franchises, but at the very least, with G one and even G three, it was made by people who sort of did have some kind of interest. They just didn't do it so well. MLP Generation Four was, is in my opinion, the best we can get from the franchise. There's basically no topping it. Sure, it has its weird set. It has its weird moments, and even moments that don't really work, or episodes that don't work. But as a whole, it really is lightning that will never strike twice, in my opinion. So honestly, I feel like probably one of the things that they, I feel like one thing that what they'll probably most likely do is start back from scratch and try again. But this yeah. time, my advice would be. Basically, uh, where did a- Angron go? Did I scare him off? Uh, no, no, anyways, it's, okay, it's, it's okay. active. No, no, it's all, okay, good. It's all good. Honestly, okay, my okay. biggest, honestly, the biggest thing I could give is, I feel like they should. My biggest advice is, wait a little, wait a few minutes, wait a little, uh, wait, just More give it a few some minutes. time. Give it some time. Actually, no, 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 assemble a so, um, actually yeah, assemble so, uh, a crew. Let's get. Um, I'm let's... actually not done yet. Um, assemble oh, a ahead, crew. Sorry, sorry. Keep, that, keep that, going. That cares. That cares. But if you were to ask me what I would want to do, I'd say make a show about the student six. You know, they didn't really get much ta- attention in the last two ep- seasons. I mean, they actually did get some attention, but in my opinion, they're there could have been more stories to tell with them. Actually, honestly, I kind of, I was kind of wishing that uh, the ne- we would actually get a spinoff show starring the student six, like you know, Silverstream, Gallus, Ocellus, Yona, yeah. Sandbar, and uh, of course, uh, Ga- and of course, uh, Smolder. We get more stories with them, more development from them. We see them take on the mantle of the elements of harmony while the, the previous main six become the uh be- um, guide. Um, they become the mentors. Yep. Uh, that's just my thoughts. But those are just my thoughts. Also, Maybe building up of building up of a what if series, I kind of wanted to one I've always wondered what would happen if uh G4 ever in ever integrated humans like the return of Megan Williams, like Twilight Sparkle meets Megan Williams. Like, I'm kind of curious what they would do. But would also probably be a double edged sword. Who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah who knows? that's the best way to look so, at it. Honestly, that's the big thing. We don't know what's going on in Hasbro at the moment. So, either yeah, way, you never really will know. But, so either yeah. way, we can go either way. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yep, it's all good. It's all good. So, uh, now it is time for the uh, Dragon of Scale where. We are going to rank, although there were a lot of dragon assists in this episode, we're really going to rank just Blaze because she was the one with the most amount of screen time, basically. So okay. that's why she's going to be the one to be ranked this week on the patent pending dragon scale. I'll go first. And for my score, it's going to be interesting because 
her design is is uh, decent at best. You know, uh, like I say, uh, yeah. I like what they do with the size difference. So she really just looks like an ordinary pony, you know, so just with scales and dragon claws. So like the visual aspect is a little eh. I like the voice. And I really like what they did with the character, with her being more like a throwback to the G4 style of dragons compared to the other dragons who are more accepting and open to friendship. That's why for Blaze, I am going to give her a probably pretty high score of... I'm going to give her 6 out of 10. It's just I would love to give her more. It's just the design. It's the design of the dragons as a whole. It just feels so awkward that it, it kind of drags the whole thing down. But the voice is good. The characterization is good. Her, her, She has probably the best uh, arc out of all the dragons in the episode, Spike uh, notwithstanding. So, But I just can't give her higher than 6 out of 10. I would, really would love to, but it's just the design drags it down, unfortunately, which, you know, shame, but that happens. So, Angron, what would you give her? Uh, I agree. The design definitely uh, could have been been better could have been more unique could have been you know not what we got it looks very pony like and i will say this it absolutely uh and i will say this uh flaws aside uh she uh, definitely needed a little bit of a better character but given everything that happened in the episode given the lore given the tie-ins given all that stuff i strangely didn't hate the design as much as i did her character like she felt a little too needlessly uh uh she felt needlessly uh uh, uh cynical uh, a little overly so she, it wasn't too bad but uh yeah that juxtaposition uh, uh was a double-edged sword for me personally but uh strangely enough the uh strangely enough i am going to give her for the benefit of the doubt, and uh, because I just feel like it, I'm going to give her a 7 out of 10. It just feels right for a character like her for some odd reason. I can see that working. That that does make sense. You know, 7 out of 10, 6 out of 10, that's our range. I feel yeah. like that's probably going to be the range she's in, but we'll have to see what happens next, because um, Math, what would you rank her? All right, so this one I actually have two different ratings, one that I'm actually using for the scale and then one that's a bit more personal thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, so the, the first one that, that is for the scale, she's a six. The The design is decent, serviceable. Just it, It's basically like right where you want it to be. It's nothing more. It's yeah. less, really. Uh, and her character is fine i guess it's yeah it, both the design and the character are fairly generic but they aren't bad generic they're workable generic yeah which is why she's a six it's 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 okay it's just like slightly above average uh my own personal though and this one just keep this away from the actual rating itself this is just me going on a rant for a minute all the dragons are one in this just because they exist, and that's me being generous. I hated them. The, the fact that they... I, I love the designs of the dragons in G4, how they were all unique and creative and had their own personalities. Here, they feel like it is a literal copy-paste of every single one. They all use the same models. They, they added the cutie marks for whatever reason the they're all quadrupeds rather than bipeds it's it just there's nothing uh, that makes this connected to g4 and i don't understand why they did that and it actually kind of upsets me because they're just so different as their own things that's why there are six because hey that's that's perfectly fine but as Ooh. connected to g4 itself that is so dumb and i hate it yeah, yeah. No, I think I, I might. Like I think I might change mine into a six out of ten too. Like yeah. everything going for them, their means... unique fire, their magic and whatnot. It's all decent, but uh, that the designs and the fact that they they're kind of hampered by the fact that Hasbro wants no more bronies yeah, is why I'm gonna do uh, six out of ten. Yep, yep. Kind of a shame, but all right. So, Striker, would you uh, rank Blaze? Honestly, it wasn't real. It didn't really impress me that much. Uh, I might just go with five. 
be completely honest. All good. All good. Mm. Um, so let's see. Uh, Shark, what would you give uh, Blaze? I am probably going to be the generous one because I'm going to give her a 7, actually, and probably stick oh. with that. Okay. For what yeah. it's worth, like, yes, all the dragons, it's kind of weird that they all have the same design. And, like, my, my theory is that they the dragon models weren't made from zero. They they are altered pony models, so... And it will make sense, honestly. But yeah. I think this, this is a, her, she's a character that the, that the animators and designers look at and say, like, well, this character is actually going to be important. Actually, with what they have, let's put some effort in, in her design and her character. And, yeah, between the colors and general shapes and stuff, I think she looks pretty neat, honestly. Uh, the yeah, I, I can see that. The personality, well, you did say that it's cynical, but it's kind of understandable. Like, it's been years, they've been separa- almost separated from the entire friendship races, they've been alone. And, well, the fact that she isn't immediately hostile, hostile, like they would have been in Gen 4, it's like a plus, and she quickly turns around, and there's some sort of arc there. So, for what this season is, for what the dragons are, I think she gets, gets a lot, and... She could have been much less. She could have so there was effort with her. So I'm sticking with a seven. Yeah, yeah I think I might get back to my seven as well. Okay, all right. That's nice so nice that's, good. that's good. No, it's all good. It's all good. But uh, what hat? Okay, let's see who's next here. Jordan, what would you give uh, Blaze? I would give Blaze a seven, only for one thing that's making it stop. Well, make the two. Yes, they're designed like almost like pony size. Is that even though she's called Blaze, she should be a fire dragon. She's not, which kind of sucked in a way. They had other two dragons that were able to breathe fire, but I'm like, uh, your colors don't even say you guys look like you're like fire types. Blaze looks literally like, okay, I, she has like the like, okay, I'm telling you straight up, we need to get this done, go rescue our friends, which is kind of reckless. I get that point her attitude, but it reminds me of Ember how she used to be, like, straightforward, tells you the truth, like, we need to get, get this done over with, but not, don't think it too fast, which she kind of does, but her ability to be like, go ahead. Yeah, strangely, I kind of imagine, like, at some point, Ember and another dragon had a kid, and Blaze was the result of that. Huh, Probably. That does make sense. But yeah. I mean, like, how her ability is not to breathe fire, nor her name is Blaze. But I'm like, okay, I'm thinking you, because the way she looks, her color-wise, look like red and yellowish. I'm expecting, okay, she is literally titled Fire Dragon. She's now, I'm like, what, what, you, what are you giving me here? You gave the <laughs> other two different names, but quote to a fire type, but M, uh, Blaze here looks and acts like how a fire dragon would act like a bit. Yep. Definitely, definitely. So, so, yeah, I would have given her an honest seven, but uh, me to go for a six. It's all good. It's all good. So, um, let's see. Oh, b- before we get to our guests, I just want to say that uh, Lucky Evie, although he could not take part in this episode, he gave a rating, and he gave them actually seven out of ten. So, so far, that is in the lead for the uh, probably the average score of uh, Blaze, which is interesting. Now, let's see. Uh, Python... What would you give a uh, blaze on the Dragonist scale? So I had to check back with the wiki to get caught up with, with everything concerning blaze and the general topic and such. Uh, I'll go with a six, but definitely a one for every other dragon for being plain. That's all. That's all right. It's all right. And um, last, uh, Charvoon, what would you uh, rank? Uh, uh, boy. Blaze. Honestly. Okay. Uh... This, this is going to be, this is my big finale. Not, this is going to be a rant, but a subdued rant. Like, go ahead, as go ahead. A, it's okay. I'm going to, I know a lot of people gave uh, Blaze generally decent uh, rankings, but honestly, given from two different perspectives, I'm going to give her a four out of 10. Okay. Well, here's the thing. As a character on her own, she, uh, on her own, 
she's pretty forgettable in my opinion. She's not bad, but she's not really that great. The desi her design, in my opinion, is too is so boring and generic, and like everyone points out, is inconsistent with everything else. And and she basically does look like every other drag, every other female dragon. The voice acting kind of annoyed me. That's something I didn't talk about in the podcast. I didn't like the voice acting, especially from Misty. I think that's her name. The the and the personality itself. It's there's something there. There's something there that could have been great, but. It just it was just not given enough time to explore or really to develop. She just felt one note and not in a unique way. So on her own, she's just yeah. kind of she's just kind of a she's just kind of a forgettable addition to the cast. And honestly, my thoughts of her are honestly reflective of my uh, are kind of a reflective of my thoughts on the sh or at least of this episode in comparison in uh, when it when you really put it on its own on its own this episode of my little pony generation 5 is generic there's something there there's something there are ideas there there's something there you there could have been great things there's some good ideas but it's just it just everything just felt like it was on autopilot from the design to the story to the characters Honestly, on its own, it would just be forgettable, and I wouldn't be that angry. However, in comparison, but but this is not a thing of its own. It's supposed to be a follow-up to Generation 4. So, as a standalone thing, it's kind of forgettable, but I would just walk out of it okay with decent spirits. But as a follow-up to My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, one of my all-time favorite shows... It really is absolutely angering that they could have done some great that they took these avenues that could have expanded the lore, expanded the universe, made something great, and they just made something so pedestrian, so forgettable, so lifeless, so safe, so chart like. That's sort of, and that's in my opinion, the biggest insult the show is. That, or at least Generation 5 is in comparison to... Be, th this is why I feel the most insulted to Generation 5. It just feels like yeah. obligation without much soul. Generation 4, sure. Yeah. You could argue that it was probably obligation 2, but it was made with people who gave it their all. Who gave it... Who were absolutely in love with the idea, in love with the characters. Wanted to treat the audience... Like, they were all-inclusive adults, even the children. This was a show that spoke to a lot more than just five-year-old girls. And the fact that this follows up, that just plays into that mentality, is absolutely insulting, in my opinion. But back onto Blaze, as a character on her own, she's just forgettable and generic. As an addition to the cast, it's basically... It's basically another. It's basically another way. Why? Why yeah, I get yeah. so angry with Generation Five, so and why? I'm... Honestly, the more I think about it, the angrier I get. But again, on her own, she's not awful. There's there was a lot of potential, but they just didn't follow through. So once again, that's What's just four... a four out of ten. Okay, so four out of ten is what you would give her on the notes, basically, right? Yes, I'm sorry for okay. going on that tangent. No, 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 I just it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. wanted to let it out. Opinion. It's all good, it's all good. It's no problem, no problem. So that's going to be it for this week's episode. If you have any questions or if you want to send us even more reasons as to why G4 was better, you can email us at fireydiscourse at outlook.com. Visit us on Twitter at twitter.com slash fireydiscourse. Be sure to subscribe and like the uh, YouTube video and also subscribe to the playlist and for rest of uh, for the rest of the podcast as well. Next I just week, hope the next... We'll be discussing the 2000 Buzz Lightyear of Star Command episode, Root Let's go. of Evil. That's going to be a lot of fun to talk about a classic cartoon in that way. And you guys have fun with forward that. To discussing that. So that's going to be it for uh, this week. And until next time, thank you guys so much for watching. And take care. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. Adios. Bye. See you Peace next out. week. <laughs>